Morph Digging Motion Designers. Today we'll be mesh deforming a mega dank sphere. There's going to be blobs with transforming spikes. There's going to be Mo Extrude and Mesh Deformer magic. Some classic 3D MoGraph stuff. Right, we're up in our scene and the first thing we need to do is to create a sphere. And we'll change the sphere type to hexahedron so it only uses quads. And then to that sphere we will add a Mo Extrude. We only want one extrusion step on that one. And under transform we should turn down all the position parameters to zero, but all the scale parameters to 0.1. So now this is our mesh, and we can use this Mo Extrude to do some weird and wacky morphing shit. To do that we will use some effectors. Let's start with creating a regular old random effector. So then we get this fuzzball, not quite what we're after. And we'll fix that by turning down all the position parameters to zero, except for the Z position, which I will actually turn up to 100. And because they're all equally extruded, I need to go into the Effector tab and change the random type from the standard random, which I think does things based on object ID, to something like Turbulence, which is based on world space. So let's see how this moves now. A bit too much. I'll turn down the animation speed to somewhere around 40. And I might as well turn down the scale to 40 as well, get some more variation. And I don't want any of these spikes going into the sphere. So I will simply go into the min max values here and turn up the minimum amount to 0%. So that's just going to randomize the effector power between 0 to 100%. Right, fall of time. Let's get this under control. Let's make our fall of spherical. Let's turn up the scale so it covers more of the sphere. Then turn up the fall of amount as well. I'll set that to 90%. So if we move it over here, we get a bit more of an interesting look. But for a bit of extra interest, I will draw a little curve here, make it real sharp. Which will just make the spikiest spikes way spikier than the less spiky spikes. But I am slightly bothered by this big lump here, which just looks a bit heavy. So I'm going to use a copy of our random effector as a child of the sphere to deflate the sphere where there aren't any spikes. Under deformer, I will activate polygon deformation. So now if we move this around, it kind of inflates the sphere, which is the exact opposite of what I wanted to do. So let's turn the position transformation on the set axis to negative 100 instead. And then I also want it to only affect the areas outside of the falloff, so I will invert the falloff and maybe just make it a little bit smaller as well. well it's something like that. And it seems like it's collapsing it a bit too much. So let's set the transformation parameter on the z-axis to maybe around 60 instead. And then my final adjustment on this one would be to increase the minimum value just so it deflates slightly more evenly and looks a bit less lumpy. Right, now wouldn't it be wonderful if there was a simple way to control both of these effectors? So I just had to move one around and the other one just kind of tagged along. Oh, but there is. Welcome to Espresso for people who are slightly uncomfortable at the thought of Espresso Part 3. The Global Matrix. It's gonna be a heavy one this. Start by adding an Espresso tag to one of your effectors. And then you drag both of the effectors into the Espresso editor. On your first effector, you want to create the Global Matrix as an output. And then you want to connect that to the Global Matrix as an input on your other effector. And then that's it. Now when you move the first one around, the other one just follows along. This goes for precision, and it goes for rotation, and it even goes for scale. So now we have this little neat gizmo which spikes up and deflates the sphere. So when render time finally comes around, you'll probably want better geometry than you have right now. Maybe you're thinking, well, let's add a subdivision surface to this. And sure, you could do that, but it's not going to have those nice mechanical looking spikes anymore. So maybe you could use a bevel deformer. Sure, you could try that, but if we try that, and apply that to our sphere, you'll start to see, especially if we look close, that those tips are actually intersecting, and no doubt they're doing that at the base of these spikes as well. Plus, if we try to play this back, the performance is atrocious. So what then, what can we do? Well, ladies and gentlemen, that's where the fucking mesh deformer comes in. Let's create a copy of our sphere and delete all the deformers from it. This is going to be our high res target sphere. So I want that one to have 10 times the detail. Then we can finally add our mesh deformer to this. Then we're going to use our low res deformed sphere as the deformation cage for our high res sphere. 
To do that, we need to first turn off both effectors we have so that the two spheres match identically in shape and drag our low res sphere into the cages field of the mesh deformer. And then we need to press initialize and then the mesh deformer creates a state from which to deform. So if we turn on the effectors now and deform the low res mesh, nothing happens to the high res mesh. That's due to the Mo extrude changing the mesh of our low res sphere, confusing the heck out of our mesh deformer. And as you might imagine, the fix is a connect object. Let's turn off weld while we're here and then go into our mesh deformer and replace the sphere as a cage with our brand new connect object. And then turn off the effectors again before clicking initialize. Once it's done, you can see it takes up a bit more memory. That's always a good sign. And still nothing happens. But we're really close now because the only thing we need to do is go under advanced and change external from ignore to surface. And now the points that are outside the deformation cage are going to deform with the closest point on the surface. And it already works. So if we turn off the sphere completely, we can move our gizmo around and see our high res sphere deform. Finally, it does what it's supposed to do, and it's doing it with a really lovely high res mesh. So if we want to round these edges off slightly, we can actually use a subdivision surface. And even with this many polygons, it's still quicker than using the bevel deformer. But let's turn that down just for now. In the steel prize video, I had the blob turn into a sphere completely after it was done blobbing. So let's do that here too. Let's turn on the fall off in our mesh deformer. Let's make that spherical. Let's make it massive as well. I'm going to turn it up to 500 centimeters. And then I will turn up the fall off percentage as well, up to somewhere around 60%. So now as we move this one around, you can see that it transitions from blob to sphere. There's a bit of an edge here, but that's fixed easily by just drawing a curve in the fall off. Right, let's link this up with the Expresso as well. Let's drag in our mesh deformer into the Expresso editor and then link that up to its global matrix. So now as we move our main random effector around, the other random effector follows along as well as our mesh deformer. So if we want to animate this, we just need to animate the one. I'm going to do that right now. So I now have this little animation of the effectors swooping around, the spikes are going out, and then as they swoop away, they shoot back in again. It's pretty good, but it needs that little extra thing. And if you know me, you know what that's going to be. It's going to be a jiggle deformer. And let's make sure we add that to the low res mesh for speed and for quality. Let's add that after the Mo extrude. Already it looks a little bit more natural. But let's turn down the stiffness to 20 and the structural to 20 as well as drag to 5. And let's give that another playthrough. Now that just looks a lot jigglier and a lot better. The only thing left to do after that is just add a sweet material, light this scene and render. I'm going to use a material quite similar to the one I created in our incandescent bunny tutorial, which looks a little something like this. And then that's all there is to it. That's how you create a weird spaced out pineapple looking blob in Cinema 4D, specifically using some cool mesh deformer methods. So until next time, careful with these spiky balls and stay in mesh deformed motion. Oh,